Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremti News at 6. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Whitney Ward. So it is election night here in Washington today, the final day of the August primary. Still a couple hours left to get your ballots to one of those drop boxes. Probably too late to mail in your ballot at this point. Our political reporter Casey Decker joining us now. And Casey, what are some of the big races that you're following tonight? Yeah, it's an off year, so no, nothing like governor or Congress, obviously sure. no president. But some races for city council, both in the city of Spokane and city of Spokane Valley. Let's go ahead and over, go to the wall here and take a look at some of these candidates, who they are. Uh, we have two races in Spokane City Council that are going to be on your ballots for the August primary. There are actually three positions that will be voted on in November, but position two, there are only two candidates. They both automatically move to the primary. So if you're on the South Hill, for example, you will not have any City of Spokane races. But if you're in Northeast Spokane, you will see these three candidates, Luke Jasmine, Nagmana Shirazi, and Jonathan Bingham. Now, all three of them have been running pretty robust campaigns. Luke Jasmine and Nagmana Shirazi are more left-leaning candidates, and they have a lot of progressive support. Jonathan Bingle, more conservative candidate, right leaning candidate. He's gotten a lot more uh, support from businesses. He's gotten a lot of money from the Realtors Pack, for example. So I'd expect that Bingle will advance to the November general. It'll only be a one of these two, obviously, who will advance. And it'll be interesting to see whether it's Jasmine or Shirazi. They both have about the same amount of money raised, about the same number of important endorsements. So it's really anybody's game. That'll be an interesting story tonight. Let's go ahead and look now at District 3. That is Northwest Spokane. <laughs> Here are four of the candidates. We got Karen Kearney, Mike Lish, Christopher Savage, and Zach Sapone. Christopher Savage doesn't have a lot of money raised. He doesn't have a very robust campaign. Neither does Karen Kearney, but Lish and Sapone are both strong candidates. Lish has a lot of money from the Realtors Pack as well. He's the more conservative candidate. Zapone is one of the uh, more progressive candidates. He's got a lot of union backing. Uh, and then there's actually one more candidate as well if we go to the next page here, and that is Lou Hill. Uh, she is a candidate who has a lot of support from progressive groups, and she's raised a lot of money in small donors. Uh, you'll be able to see her picture in a second. There we go, that's Lou Hill. Uh, she actually, I think, has the most overall individual donors of any candidate running for Spokane City Council. So. In this race, I think it'll be a similar thing where Mike Lish will most likely move on to the general with a lot of that conservative support and it'll probably be either between Hill or Zapone for the progressive side. Again, it'll be interesting to see which one moves forward there. Both have pretty robust campaigns. Okay, let's take a look now at Spokane Valley. Three positions up for grabs in the Valley. And in position four, we've got these four candidates here. Uh, of these, the two candidates that I think are most likely to move on to the general are going to be Ben Wick and Brandon Fenton. Ben Wick, of course, is the incumbent. He currently holds the seat, and he's actually the mayor of Spokane Valley. They do an interesting thing there where rather than independently elect the mayor, they just elect a bunch of city council members, and then those members pick a mayor from amongst themselves. So Ben Wick is currently that. It doesn't mean if he loses that the next person would automatically become the mayor, but they would take a seat. So Ben Wick, uh, he's got a lot of support, and then Brandon Fenton is the most amount of money raised of the opponent, so I wouldn't be surprised if he moved on. He is one of the co-owners of the Black Diamond Bar. You might remember we've done some coverage of them. Uh, they got into uh, some controversy over staying open during the pandemic. Uh, so he's become something of a, a hot button figure recently and he's raised a decent amount of money, but Ben Wick still has a lot more money. We'll go on to the next position and you'll see another familiar name there. You'll see another Fenton, Wayne Fenton. That's Brandon's dad and co-owner of the Black Diamond. They're both running on a similar ticket. They have a, a shared website actually. And I think he will be pretty likely to move on to the general, uh, but the other candidate that I think is most likely to probably get even more votes is Pam Haley. She is the incumbent. She has a lot of more establishment support, a lot of money, and she is, of course, also the incumbent. So I think it'll probably be these two moving on to the general election. And now there's one more position in Spokane Valley, position seven. We'll take a look at that now as well. Uh, Linda Thompson is the incumbent here. She currently holds the seat. I expect her to move on to the general. And then Laura Padden is probably the one that I expect to move along with her. Uh, Laura Padden is a web designer who is married to State Senator Mike Padden, so she's got a lot of political support as well. So probably these two moving on to the general election. So still a couple more hours, just under two hours left to get those ballots in. So fill them out, take them to one of those white drop boxes, make sure your vote counts in this election. All right, turn to Krem 2 for those results starting after 8 o'clock tonight. Casey, thank you very much. Let's talk weather. Heavy smoke and the heat making a return this week, making for an uncomfortable combination of both smoke and those hot temperatures. Let's get straight to Tom Sherry to break down how long this smoke will be sticking around for, Tom. Well, uh, it has actually improved since our 4 o'clock broadcast. We were as high as 172, which was in the unhealthy uh, range, and now we've dropped down to 137, uh, which is unhealthy for sensitive groups. So actually improving air 
better quality uh, over the last three hours. And we're not going to argue with that, are we? We still have that air quality warning in effect through Wednesday afternoon. And then we've got some changes on the way for later on in the week. It's hot and still smoky out there. 95 degrees, but again, not as smoky as it was previously today. Uh, winds out of the east northeast right now at only three miles per hour. And you can see the other wind speeds went at you because of the thunderstorms in that area. You see 16 mile an hour winds there. So we'll look for a hot evening tonight and then smoky conditions continuing again tomorrow, although it has improved slightly, which is nice. Uh, daytime high expected on Wednesday of 98 degrees. We look for a chance of rain on Friday and cooler for the weekend. Look at that 77 with a slight chance of rain on Saturday, 80 expected on Sunday. So the poor air quality is expected to continue at least through Wednesday. We talked about the uh, air call, uh, quality warning. You know, we've been in that unhealthy range for quite a while until just recently. We want to go outside to meteorologist Thomas Patrick. He's tracking where all the smoke is coming from. Thomas. Yeah, and first of all, Tom, I can report that skies look a little bit more blue today than they have over the last several days. So maybe an indication that that air quality is getting just a little bit better. But when you look at the satellite imagery, you can just see how widespread all that smoke is across the inland northwest. And it's not just one individual fire that is the direct uh, directly responsible for that. It's all of them, quite frankly, all across the western US from California to Washington at British Columbia and even Idaho. We're pretty much just surrounded by a lot of wildfires that continue to pour more smoke into the atmosphere. Let's show you some individual examples. One of such is the Dixie fire in Northern California. You can see that smoke directly blowing northward into the northeastern corner of that state. But again, only the communities downstream here would say, okay, that's the direct cause of those smoky skies. For us, it's all across the region. You can see the flow of the atmosphere is generally from the south and west, but there are no fires that are directly to the south and west of Spokane. So another indication that a lot of that smoke is just settling into the Columbia Basin. But here in Washington, we have quite a few wildfires, especially in the northern portion of the state. Let's check out the Methow Valley. This would be Winthrop and notice that you actually can't even see some of these mountains that are in the background here. That's because the Cub Creek fire and the Cedar Creek fire are directly pouring smoke into the valley, which has is having a direct result on that air quality. But again, there are so many fires that it's going to take a pretty significant change in our weather pattern to get a lot of this smoke out of the region. All right, Thomas, thank you very much. So we know today's poor air quality also causing local recreational programs to make changes or some to even just cancel altogether. All of this coming as the current air quality index suggests that pretty much everyone, everyone, regardless of their health conditions, could suffer health effects from the air. So some people are choosing to stay home even if their sport isn't canceled. Our own Ian Smay spoke with local recreational leaders about the changes that are now being made. As smoke continues to fill the sky in the Spokane area, a lot more people are choosing to stay indoors in an effort to avoid any possible negative health effects. But some people don't have a choice at all, as outdoor recreational programs for all ages are choosing to modify or cancel completely in an effort to stay safe. The Inland Northwest has been under a blanket of smoke since the start of August. That's thanks to multiple wildfires in the region. When the air quality index from the Spokane Regional Clean Air Agency reaches 150 or unhealthy, Spokane Parks and Recreation has to make a decision on whether to hold their youth and adult programs. City pools have also been closed this week. Fiona Dixon with Spokane Parks and Recreation says some programs for both children and adults have been canceled. But it's not all bad news, as she says the city can also get creative. Yeah, some of them we're able to get kind of creative with. So like, for example, one of our outdoor programs this week is an outdoor adventure camp. We were able to move some parts inside, do an indoor aquatic center, and then kind of reschedule some of that programming. Dixon also says they can offer refunds to people if a program or camp gets canceled due to the conditions. The effects of the smoke aren't just limited to city parks and recreation. Spokane County golf courses are asking people to be safe. Laytaw Creek Golf Course has seen a dip in golfers since the smoke rolled in. That along with the heat has kept play down a little bit, or if they do play, they want to play early in the morning. We do have people check the air quality index because this is pretty serious and we don't want people getting hurt and this is a game of a lifetime and we'd like people to play it for that long. The smoke also came just in time for the course's last youth program. The golf course hasn't had to cancel anything as their threshold is 300 on the air quality index. They will also offer refunds if it's canceled, but those at the course hope to avoid any closures as they come off the heels of a tough year and a half. To the COVID we had to limit the number of participants in the classes and then now we have the smoke coming in. It's been it's been a challenge getting through it, but, but we're making it. 
In Spokane, Ian Smay, Krem2 News. And the smoke also causing a number of closures and cancellations just among outdoor activities across Spokane. So let's take a look now at what is closed today in Riverfront Park, starting with the Numerica Skate Ribbon, the Numerica Sky Ride, and the Pedal Carts. Also, the Sky Ribbon Cafe all closed today. Riverfront Park also <laughs> tweeted saying that Pilates at the Clock Tower is also canceled. That is normally held on Tuesdays at the Clock Tower Meadow. Riverfront Eats will also be closed today, and the next event is going to be held on August 10th. Then Garland Summer Market, that is closed tonight. And as we look ahead to other closures, the Kendall Yards Night Market tomorrow has already been canceled. That's the one that usually happens on Wednesday evenings. The market will be reopening next week as long as air quality is improved. And for the latest updates on all the air quality here in the area, just text the word air to 509-448-2000. We'll send a link right to your phone. Well, I think that most of the hospitals in the region have been operating at capacity or near capacity um, for the last uh, week or so. That is Dr. Robert Scoggins from Kootenai Health in Coeur d'Alene, and he's talking about the surging COVID numbers they're seeing over in North Idaho right now. I spoke with him earlier today, and he's concerned, he's frustrated, and he's just tired because he says we have vaccines that are effective, yet here we are 16 months into this pandemic, and we're once again at a situation where hospitals are at or near capacity. Dr. Scoggins says they are seeing a surge in patients similar to the surges that we saw last winter, and then again in July. The patients this time, he said, tend to be what he described described as younger than in previous surges. He also said it's not just COVID patients being impacted, but things like elective surgeries or even more serious surgeries are also being impacted by the availability of beds. So if they're out of beds, a procedure could be delayed. OK, so what is behind this latest surge? I asked the doctor. What do you attribute it to? Is it people who are deciding not to get vaccinated? It is uh, the vast majority of patients that are being admitted are unvaccinated. Uh, it is also the uh, Delta variant is the predominant variant in the community right now. And this is a very highly transmissible variant, different than what we've seen previously. Gotcha. So more people are getting infected. Younger people are getting infected. I also asked Dr. Scoggins if he's treated patients who wound up in the ICU with COVID who are not vaccinated, if they change their tune on getting the vaccine after getting so sick, he said, yes, several of them. And he also reiterated the vaccines are safe and really effective. So he urges everyone to please get vaccinated for their sake and just for the sake of everyone else who might need to be treated in a hospital. And in Washington, there has been a sharp increase in COVID cases because of this Delta variant, which is now making up 76% of cases all across the state. Over the past four days, an average of 1,500 new cases have been reported each and every day. Hospital occupancy is now at the highest level seen to date in, in 2021. And again, because of this increased transmission, patient demand, and hospital staffing challenges. Today, there will be 6,000 new cases added to the state's dashboard because of a backlog since July 30th. 451 new cases were just reported in Spokane County today. That's since July 30th to make up for some of that back backlog. The state's positivity rate is also climbing quickly to five and a half percent up from a low of 2% just a month ago and more than 600 people are now hospitalized with COVID-19. That's an increase of more than 20% from last week. Still ahead tonight, a family left searching for answers after all three of their dogs died after swimming in the Little Spokane River. What pet experts are saying may have caused their mysterious deaths coming up next after the break.